Hi, I'm Molly Hatch. I'm an artist designer. I work with companies like Anthropology to make products for your home, ranging from wall art to ceramics. And I also exhibit my artwork in a gallery in New York, as well as museums internationally. I use drawing in my work all the time, and I want to share the foundations of line with you. I'm going to go over materials from paper and the different kinds, to pens and pencils and the different marks that they make. I'll go over different kinds of line, from blind contour, implied line, to line networks. Along the way, I'll give you a few tips and tricks that I use in my own studio practice. When you first start drawing, you don't necessarily know what tools to use, so here are a few that I like to use. Mixed media paper in multiple different sizes, so try using some that you're comfortable with. It doesn't really matter what size, it's just what you're comfortable with. Mixed media paper can be great for pens and pencils, and even for watercolor, depending on what you're doing. So it might be a good all-in-one kind of paper to start with. You might consider artist tiles. They're great and they come in paper that's good for watercolor to pen and pencil. And they're also a good easy size for trying different things out. You can also use a range of pencils from hard to soft. This set comes in HB to 8B. So the Micron pens that I have here range in different sizes and they're great to experiment with too. Fat tips, skinny tips, you'll find the one that you like the best. And Faber-Castell also makes some great pens. It's nice to have an eraser because we all make mistakes. And then we'll have a pencil sharpener on hand. Also optional is having a piece of tracing paper on hand. I have two different kinds of paper here. The artist tiles are watercolor tiles and that's a slightly rougher paper. The texture is better for taking in watercolor and wet media. And then I also have this mixed media paper, which is really great for using with pens and pencils and even watercolor, but not quite as good for watercolor or wet media. Mostly today we're gonna use this smoother mixed media paper. The different quality of the paper that you're using will affect the quality of the line that you're making with the pencils or pens that you're using. And that is a great lead into talking about pencils. So we have a range here of these Faber-Castell pencils from HB to 8B. HB is the hardest one in the set, and I'm going to show you what marks it makes. I'm drawing on my mixed media paper just to give you a sense of what that looks like with the line. So the hardest pencil, HB, which we're drawing with now, gives a really sharp line. The softer pencils, you'll see as I work through them, give you a softer line. So when you're shading, you're going to get a, a lot of lines when you shade with an HB pencil. And when you shade with the softer pencils, as you'll see, it gives you a broader, softer shade. The next pencil is just B. It's also a little on the hard side. So you'll see it's shading a little bit better than the HB. Moving on to 2B, which is more akin to what we use in our day-to-day, -day, our normal pencil. And again, shading a little bit better, still nice defined line. Moving on next to 4B. Oh, broke right in the middle. <laughs> Maybe I'll draw that line again. And then shading with that. So you can see it's getting softer and there's less defined line in the shading. And the line that I'm drawing here is even a bit softer. 6B is the next. And the shading is even nicer on this. And the softest lead in this set is the 8B. And as I'm shading, you can really see that there's very little line definition, if any at all, when I'm shading even hard to see the definition in the 8B there. When you're choosing your pencils for the drawing you're working on, consider the harder pencils for finer lines and fine detail, and the softer pencils for shading and broad areas of softer lines. Moving on to pens, the different sizes will also affect the kind of line quality you get in your mark making. So the smallest tipped pen is 005. So drawing on the multimedia paper, you can see how thin and fine that line is. And again, when you're trying to do shading or filling in an area, the 005 is gonna give you very, very small little lines. Next is 01. Again, it also is making a fine line that 
doesn't shade very well. Move on to 0, 2, moving up a little bit in size. But again, these are all pretty fine. They're all going to give you good line quality for hatch marking and other kinds of mark making. 0, 3, a little bit fatter. You can see that. Getting a little bit better for shading. 0, 5, much wider. Kind of making a big jump here from the 0, 2 to the 0, 5. 0, 8, very wide. You can see it especially in the written numbers. Now moving on to the graphic 1, which is a really fat tipped marker. Kind of like a normal kid's marker almost. The brush pen has a very thick to thin tip, so you can use it on its flat side to create a wide line, or you can use it at the tip, like a brush, to create a thin line. So you can shade in a wide area with that, or you can use it to make a more calligraphic line. Finally, the Faber-Castell brush pen as well. It's a little bit tighter, not as loose, but it makes a similar line quality to the other brush pen, the Pigma. We've been working on the multimedia smooth paper without much tooth, and I want to show you now with a selection of the pens that we've been working with, what happens when you use them on a wet media or watercolor paper. I'm going to work with the 03. So this seems to be working okay on the surface and not bleeding much. Here I'm using the 08, and you can kind of see the texture in the line from the paper. So it's not as smooth a line. It's not bleeding necessarily, but it's hard to get a detail or fine line. Brush tool, and the flat line. You can kind of see the texture there in the surface. And it's definitely showing up there, much softer line. And finally, we'll look at what the Faber-Castell does. Almost acts like watercolor itself. So just remember that when you choose your pens or are trying new pens, different pens and different papers can cause different reactions. So even though we didn't get much bleeding in the pens we used, it can happen that the pens and paper that you choose react differently than the ones we used today. So try everything before you execute your final drawing. What is line? Line is the simplest element in any drawing. So it can be a connection between two dots or two points, and it can also be an implied connection between points. So I'm going to start showing you line qualities and different kinds of line. But I'm going to just use this graphic one, the sort of fatter tip pen and paper, though you can use anything to try this pen or pencil. And we're using the multimedia paper, and that's just basically so you can see it better on camera. A line is a connection between two dots, just like that. Orientation of line can change how we view it and imply an emotional response. So diagonal lines will imply energy or movement. So this is a straight line. And a diagonal line, which I'm going to make an arrow, implies energy and movement. Horizontal lines can be more static and stable feeling. So they almost imply like a horizon and not a lot of movement is implied. Vertical lines can be also static and stable feeling and grounding, even when they're broken up. Continuous curves, lines that move, suggest movement and make the eye travel long distances around the page. Short, choppy lines make your eye jump around the page. Density of line changes how we see it. 
So a growing line that swells can feel like it's moving outward. And a shrinking line makes it feel like it's moving inward. and away. Different qualities of line are valuable tools in your drawing toolbox.